been a while since I did a blog, a vlog, a plog. It's really loud right now. I'm at the, uh, ooh, that's so loud. I'm at the Welcome Center in South Carolina. I think it's the, the north side. Yeah, the north side. And I, just, I, just, I haven't done a vlog in, in like a while since like, what, like fit. February or something or early March in Aspen so I just wanted to cover where I've been and what I've been doing since Aspen uh, the restaurant shut down because COVID we got like some 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 paid leave we got free month free month of rent for employee housing uh, I went back to Philly uh, where I have business connections and where I know the economy is good and I, I, I know the landscape so I could just do successful business whatever I wanted I was thinking about doing um, truck driving because it's a, it's a job where you can work lots of hours you don't have to interact with people if you don't want to except like your dispatcher <clears throat> occasionally and you can live in your truck, so that means there's no rent, so you can maximize your profit. Because I'm obviously saving up for the land. And I got back to Philly. I, cra uh, I crashed at my grandma's house. I was gonna, I was just gonna um, use my tent and stay in the woods near like the library and near the YMCA, so that I could have shower and workout facilities and also a place to do office work, which would basically be researching which company I wanted to drive for and go through the application process take like you know what should that take like a week or two uh, but because of COVID the library shut down the YMCA shut down so I crashed at my grandma's thankfully she was there to bring to let me in that was like definitely put me in a way better situation than I would have otherwise it wasn't the perfect situation in my eyes but that's way better than I would have had, so I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, yeah, and I was planning on crashing there for like a week or two for the same thing, just to get through the application process, figure out which company I wanted to work for. Uh, then while I was there, I, I, got the, I got the brainy idea that um, riding on a lawnmower for the same amount of time, 60, 70 hours a week, is the same job. You just sit and drive and you make more money I mean I, I ran the numbers I know the landscaping business pretty well and the lawn mowing business pretty damn well from doing it with my dad for a decade and I was like yeah you definitely make all noticeably more money in less hours of work week like you can do that and like probably make noticeably more money in like noticeably less hours and go home to sleep in your own bed every night so I decided to do that. I started up a landscaping business. I, I got a, a loan, which I don't think I could have qualified on a loan on my own. Probably not. I got, a, I got my uh, grandma to co-sign. Another, another blessing. <laughs> Two points for grandma. Uh, to get a loan, to get a mower and a trailer and a truck. And I already had some other equipment and a blower. <clears throat> I spent all that. I got the equipment. I started a company. I spent the money and the time to take to create a website. Uh, a joint home advisor that has its own fees. I invested and I'm like I spent in like business materials. I invested a lot of time and money into that. And then I was just working nonstop, trying to find customers, trying to expand on my current customer base. Uh, I got burnt out real quick, and I'm like a really introverted person. That's That was the biggest downfall. Riding the mower, great. It was just as great as I expected. Pays just as well as I expected. The other work, the other work that in order to, well, I mean, I learned the lesson too late. You don't really need to do other work to get lawn mowing customers. People are like, if you can do a good lawn mowing service, and you're reliable and your prices are reasonable, people are gonna snatch you up because they need that service. 
the, that's not the way I was looking at it. The way I was looking at it was in order to grow the business and get customers, I need to offer peripheral work, meaning I have the skills and the experience of doing whatever projects need to be done around the yard. So I was offering that. And those, I wasn't charging enough. It's just, it's just I don't, I don't, I like, I like focusing on one thing. That's why I want to drive. You just turn your brain off. You focus on one thing. You don't get distracted. You don't change tasks. I don't have ADD. I mean, I do have ADD, but it's like, it's up here. It's not in my body. Like the, my worst nightmare, two worst nightmares at work are having to talk to people that I don't want to talk to, whether that's customers, bosses, or coworkers. And two, uh, changing tasks, having to change tasks frequently and like stop what you're doing Start a new because I'm a perfectionist. I don't just change tasks. I like if I'm doing something new, I plan, I meditate, I prepare to make sure it's done perfectly. That's just I I can force myself to not do that, but that forcing myself to not to go against my nature it takes its own en- emotional toll. So changing tasks and talking to people, freaking running a business? Are you kidding me? All you do is talk to people. <laughs> You can't even work. People are constantly calling you about work. You constantly are scheduling with people and like negotiating over exactly what's going to be done and for exactly what price, figuring out when, where, how, what tools you're going to get. I I, I have to work with other people. I mean, I don't have to work with other people, but it's nice to like work with your friends and your business connections who have certain skill sets and can give you advice and support and company when you're on the job on days when you want company. But <laughs> mowing lawns is not mowing lawns. That's like a fraction of what you're doing. The mostly of what you're doing is talking to customers, collecting customers, scheduling jobs, organizing your work week, uh, doing peripheral jobs, doing like maintaining your equipment, taking care of legal stuff, finances. I got burnt out and I didn't like it. It's not worth the extra money. So I shut the business down. I sold the equipment and decided I'm going back into trucking like I was going to originally, where you can literally just drive. The company takes care of everything else. Your truck breaks down, they take care of it. They set up the the, the deliveries. You don't talk to people. You just pick it up, drop it off. That's where I'm at right now. I mean, I'm not doing that. I tried. I applied to... Uh, company and I had to go through a bunch of stuff. I had to get my birth certificate. I had to uh, keep redoing the application because of technical difficulties. I had to uh, then get my permit apparently. So then I like got the materials to study for my permit and studied for that for a week or two. And then and then I had to go do my medical exam and actually take the permit test. And I failed the medical exam for <laughs> dumb reasons that everybody already knows about, but I don't feel like talking about on this vlog because they're so it's so dumb. Uh, for substance abuse, but I'm not a substance abuser. I got approved. I, I saw it. I had they they made the state made me go see a substance abuse professional who said Josh is not a substance abuser. He's not at risk for abusing substances while he's driving a truck. Uh, and the company did not like that they said sorry no go you're no good so and then I tried applying to another company but my morale was so low and uh, uh, living with my grandma stresses me out okay no I shouldn't I don't want to point fingers like that. Living with another person stresses me out because I'm the type of person who likes to spend 48 hours alone. If I, I need like my 48 hours alone once per week. I don't need it. I've been functioning without it apparently, but if you want to call it functioning, I don't call that functioning. I call it getting by. But I've noticed in my life when I have the ability like once a week to get you know, 40 or 50 hours to myself straight. I'm really peaceful. 
and I'm not, it's not living with my grandma. You can have a roommate, you're living with them and that's it, you're just living with them. With my grandma, it's, it's family, it's an emotional connection. It's, I'm not living my own life. I'm living her life mixed with my life. And we have very conflicting lifestyles. I don't know if I was making her life harder with my lifestyle, but uh, she was making mine harder. And again, most of that, the majority of that, 80% of that is just the fact that I couldn't get 48 hours alone because I'm living with another person. But uh, 20% is just personality differences. Uh, so I moved, so, so I, yeah, I, I was, I was kind of upset by the rejection because I'd spent so much time on it. I tried work applying to another company and I was just having endless t technical difficulty with the application and I was, I was like stressed out from my living situation and, uh, I got, I got rejected from like some of my closest friends too, which just made me go deeper into my spiral and I decided like I'm so miserable right now if I was a, comp a hiring company I would not hire me for how miserable I am it sounds like a bad employee so I decided I need to take care of my mental health first so by getting out of my grandma's so I can spend time on my own and that's what, that's what I did and with the um, with my where I'm at financially, the best option was what I've done before, which is move into my car and go somewhere warm so I can sleep in my car without freezing to death. Uh, today is day one that I'm actually on my own because I left on New Year's, but I went to visit one of my old friends for five days in Pittsburgh and spent time with him, which is an awesome, awesome experience. But, oh, and I visited my grand, I gave a surprise visit to my grandparents too, but I've just been rushing and uh, I didn't. I didn't get my alone time that, I, that I've been looking for. Uh, but I didn't get my spirits raised. Uh, now this is day one that I'm on my own. I just drove for a really long time, like eight hours probably yesterday. I'm in South Carolina, and I'm about to go down to Tampa and deliver for Postmates, maybe Uber Eats or some other company if I can get in with them food delivery to the apps and we're right on the highway that's where all the noise is coming from uh, but I just really like this backdrop that's why I wanted to film this video here and there's like these nice swinging benches so South Carolina Welcome Center is pretty nice uh, that's it I'm gonna go do food deliveries just so I can feel productive build my habit of driving so I'm no some confident in knowing my comfort on the road and making money also doing it and then once I've, I, I you can tell I'm in good spirits right now way better spirits than I was a week or two ago uh, so I'm like I'm, I'm getting up there but I just want to get settled feel secure like feel like money's not a problem so get a food delivery schedule going and feel like free and have time as much time to myself as I need to make sure that I'm making decisions that are true to myself and they're not like forced on me from external you know economic and social forces and yeah so then odds are I'm going to get back to the truck drive truck application process I ever since I reached out to the one company they've just been sending me emails but I've been ignoring them <laughs> Well, I'll get back to them and see, and then maybe try other companies. Or, food delivery people, if they know what they're doing and they're working in the right city for the right company with the right work ethic, can make bank. I don't know if it's for me or not. It's kind of a stressful line of work, city driving and doing so many rendezvous per day, pickups and drop-offs. That's personal interaction, which, even though it's brief, I still don't like it. It's okay. Uh, but just so many of them. You're doing dozens, meet, seeing dozens of pickups and drop-offs a day. I don't like customer service. I'm sorry. I'm a computer programmer. I'm not a computer programmer, but I have that personality type. So that's what I'm doing.
Oh, get in the lane. Oh, shoot. I just, my friends always badger me. A couple, a couple of my friends, one in particular, always badger me. They say, Josh, why are you focused? You say you want your land. Why are you spending your whole like time figuring about jobs and money and living situations? You should just get the land. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great in a quantum world where you can manifest your reality like that. But like, what? I don't know. What does that even mean? Just get the land. Like, I need to take care of myself. But I just uh, talked to a really cool dude yesterday who's learned about the grant process and fundraising process for b- buying land. And over the past few years, he's raised like over $2 million to buy like, what, like a hundred and... Well, he hasn't used it all for land, but I think he's bought like 130 acres, 120 acres of land. And also like included like renovations and structures and buildings for other um, indigenous purposes. He's, a, he's native and he gave me a bunch of info on like the, like the world of like having a nonprofit and raising money for your nonprofit. And he just started walking me through that. I got to do some more in- research on that, but like, I, I feel like the reason I want the land is for noble causes that are going to change the world for the better, regardless of how it's going to impact my life and like my purposes for like my own motives for having land for myself. Aside from that, there are other reasons that the land will have noble existence for improving society and the world. Hopefully I need to think about that more, get it more concrete and then once I can focus on that, maybe I'll be able to raise some money to just get the land. Uh, uh, call me up. Message me. Uh, criticize me. Question me. Praise me. Uh, give me your donations. Have a happy 2021.